I would like to present some new results of ours, also collaboration with the Berlin Group, about two-way deterministic and probabilistic communication. But in order to present that better and to just pinpoint the main problem which appears here, I'll start with one-way protocols that are not deterministic but probabilistic with the well-known BB84 in which Alice and Bob change the basis of the polarization states of the qubits and they later on agree on the proper basis. They discard half of the messages that were in inappropriate basis and sift their messages so as to keep just half of them. The protocol is therefore probabilistic and here is the scheme which is well known of proper basis, orthogonal and diagonal and when in several steps they agree on their basis and they obtain the results shown in the last row. So what's essential here for our consideration of two-way protocols is the way in which Eve can eavesdrop on the messages sent between Alice and Bob. And that can be done in many different ways, only I'll just present here the basic well-known attack, which consists in measuring and resending. During such an attack, Eve introduces disturbance in the message mode, which is in the case of BB84 the only mode. We'll see later on there are also control modes in the two-way deterministic protocols. And in that way she leaves the traces in the very message mode and in the very set of transferred messages so that Alice and Bob can pinpoint her intrusion later on in the whole set of the data and post-process the data in a more effective way. We'll see that later. The mutual information between Alice and Eve surpasses the mutual information of Alice and Bob. And at that point of 11% in the case of BB84, Alice and Bob just terminate the protocol and start it anew when they eliminate Eve. In the two-way deterministic protocols that were designed in order to enable not only transfer of the QQD quantum key distribution protocols, but also continuous transfer of messages through a deterministic channel which doesn't require sifting afterwards. It was first designed as a two-wave protocol with just two bell states and it's called ping-pong protocol and it was also later on reconsidered and claimed to be found secure with all four bell states. A similar protocol was designed although it cannot be carried out and implemented with only linear elements it requires either non-linear elements or super entanglement. It's presented here. It has been also experimentally verified and implemented by Ostermeyer and Valenta. By introducing halfway plates, Alice can change C minus, which Bob is repeatedly sending. And by changing C minus to C plus or to phi plus and phi minus, she can send messages, four different messages in this case, or two in ping pong protocol, which are simply new states she generated from the original Bob state. And Bob can detect these states here presented with linear elements, but uh, with nonlinear elements, all four states. Attack, which I want to present here, which stems from our recent probabilistic two-way protocol and from the idea of Yannick Wolters, one of the co-authors of that work, runs as follows. Eve interrupts with Bob's sendings by keeping the photon he wanted to send to Alice in a quantum memory, meaning just loops of a fiber, and sends to Alice her own photon from her own source, which is of the same kind as Bob's. 
Alice encodes it as she would do that when sending messages to Bob, not knowing that Eve is in the line. And after decoding the messages with the same measurements as Bob would do when receiving Alice's messages, she encodes Bob's photon in the same way in which Alice encoded her photon after receiving it. That means that Eve receives every single message message Alice intended to send to Bob and is able to resend it to Bob without making any disturbance of the messages in the message mode. In this protocol there is also a control mode which is completely separated from the message mode. Bob and Alice exchange the information about changing the mode over a public channel, but we would like to stay for the time being in the message mode to stress our point. We'll consider the control mode later on. Another two-way protocol is the protocol with just one photon, designed by Luca Marini and Mancini in 2005, and is therefore called LM05 protocol. It has been implemented in two different ways, in two different experiments that are cited here. The idea is to send photons in two different bases and to send it to Alice who doesn't have to recognize the bases in which the states are. She is just applying Pauli operators which flip the states no matter in which bases Bob prepared them, as we can see here. So Alice's sending of messages 0 and 1 consists in either doing nothing, just returning the photon back to Bob. In that case, Bob would recognize that as message 0 because he would receive the same state in the same basis in which he sent it, or to apply one of the Pauli operators and as a result to flip the state and Bob would receive flipped state and would know that Alice sent message 1. So Alice either flips the state or doesn't and in that way she sends message 1 or 0. However, in the same way as with ping pong protocol, Eve can delay Bob's photon and send her photon to Alice, who would, thinking the photon was coming from Bob, apply the same technique by either encoding or not encoding the photon, meaning either leaving as it came and send it back, or flipping and send it back. Eve would repeat such an encoding on Bob's photon and send it back to Bob. Again, Eve doesn't introduce any disturbance whatsoever in the message mode and knows all the messages that Alice sent to Bob. Bob receives also all the messages and there are no losses, ideally, in this transmission. We should just note here that neither Alice nor Eve know the state in which Bob prepared his photons and they don't have to. When we look at the mutual information between Alice and Bob, because because of Eve's resending of the messages as they were sent and prepared by Alice and then resending into Bob, the mutual information between Alice and Bob is constant and equal to 1, meaning that Bob is receiving all the messages from Alice as they are. If can switch in or not and depending on how many sendings she intercepted in percentages we can have such a curve in which disturbance which is on the x-axis refers not to the message mode but to control mode. In the control mode, she can cause some disturbance, meaning that she is in the line to some extent of her choice. If she chooses to be in the line all the time, that would correspond to the maximal disturbance in the control mode. And in that case, she would know all the messages and the mutual information between Alice and Eve would be one. So this disturbance, to repeat again, is outside of the message mode. That means that sending messages in the message mode is like sending plain text over that mode. So can the control mode save the protocol? Can the control mode 
give a protection to plain text sent over the line. To answer that question, let us look at the standard approach to the security by means of evaluating the secret fraction of the length of the final key with respect to the length of the row key, which in the message mode should be one because Alice sends what Eve can read, Eve sends what Bob can read, so we should say it's always one. But on the other hand, it's a difference between mutual information between Alice and Bob, which is, as we said, always one, and the mutual information between Alice and Eve, which is left to the Eve's goodwill and free choice. Eve can choose to plug in all the time, and in that case, R can go down to zero meaning that Alice and Bob should do a lot of post-processing in order to take away Eve's knowledge. We can understand that in, in the following way. If Eve is tapping in the channel a lot and is approaching the mutual information with Alice being equal to one, then that means that knowing that Eve was present a lot in the channel, Alice and Bob should do really a lot of post-processing and privacy amplification to eliminate Eve's knowledge and to take away the messages she tapped. And that means that the final key would get shorter and shorter and R would get smaller and smaller approaching zero but not being negative as in the case of BB84 where the mutual information between Alice and Eve exceeds the mutual information between Alice and Bob already at the level of 11% of the disturbance within the message mode. With that reference to the standard approach to the evaluation of the secret fraction that Alice and Bob are left with, we should consider a recent proof of security of the LM05 protocol, which the authors called unconditional. They start with a universal unitary operator describing Eve's gain during her tapping of the channel in both directions. They call it the most general attack and they start with the Bob Alice channel and here we can see the terms that correspond to spin flips in the message mode which we don't have. What we have is just the first term in the rectilinear basis and in the diagonal basis here and after some calculations Alice and Bob can get the secret fraction expressed in this way where the H here is the Shannon entropy defined as usual and where the variable is the difference between these terms. So since in our attack we have C++ and also C00 equal to 1 and C01 equal to 0, we obtain that R is always equal to 1. There is no critical disturbance, meaning that actually because of this relation mutual information between Alice and Eve should be 0. So we see that this elaboration of the unconditional security actually doesn't apply to our attack and therefore cannot be a proof of unconditional security. It applies to a specific attack which was assumed in Luca Marini and Mancini's paper and which was considered in the paper of Lu, Fang, Ma and K. But since such a security proof doesn't apply to our attack, it cannot be considered unconditional. Here I made a list of the considered two-way protocols compared with the probabilistic BB84 protocol. We see that we don't have a critical disturbance in the message mode at all. Security is based on the control mode. 
the disturbance is non-existing in two-way deterministic protocols. Critical disturbance is therefore also not existing. The mutual information between Alice and Bob is one. The mutual information between Alice and Eve is between zero and one, depending on the amount of time Eve chooses to be in the line. The photon distance is twice so long as in the BB84 for LM05 or four times so long for the ping pong protocol because in the ping pong protocol the photon travels to Alice and back to Bob and the other photon Bob keeps in his fiber and the length is four times the distance between Alice and Bob. So it means that the transmittance is transmittance to the fourth in that case and to the second in the LMO case and that also means that such protocols are not suitable for great distances does that mean that taken together two-way protocols are doomed that they can't be efficiently implemented no it doesn't there is a way to implement probabilistic two-way protocol as we did in our recent work so we make use of two bell states like in the ping pong protocol and two states from the computational basis which are interesting in themselves because we use entangled photons and then let one of the photons alice does that to a polarizing beam splitter and in that way we could collapse the other photon to the same state, the Bob's photon. It is interesting here that it doesn't matter whether Alice obtained horizontal or vertical polarization, which are completely random and which she cannot control, because what's important is that they both know through the collapse of the entangled photon states that they deal with horizontal or vertical polarization. The preparation is presented here with two half-wave plates. This half-wave plate can be also here or across. We have chosen uh, such a position in order to make our calculations more efficient. And the crucial point here is that even if Eve applies her successful attack on the deterministic two-way protocol, she cannot succeed in 50% of the cases because in that way she will would cause disturbance within the message mode of the other two states in the computational basis. There is no way she can read all the messages and impose them on Bob's photon. After some tedious and lengthy but straightforward calculations, we get, as opposed to the previous two-way deterministic protocols, mutual information of Alice and Eve to be higher than the mutual information of Alice and Bob. And only after error correction, the mutual information between Alice and Bob becomes higher than the one between Alice and Eve. What's important to notice here is that in two-way protocols, because of this conundrum, and because of the fact that Alice Eve information never exceeds Alice Bob information is to pay attention to the privacy amplification procedure in post-processing of the data that Bob receives from Alice, meaning that although there is no critical disturbance, after sufficiently long elaboration of these data and processing them, rehashing them, uh, letting them through various logic gates, they can reduce the information if stole from the message channel to practically zero, but we have to come forward with a new kind of algorithms for such privacy amplification because nowadays the algorithms are concentrated on recognizing the parts in the string of data in which Eve was able to tap the messages and steal the messages by spotting errors in the string of the data. However, we don't have this privilege of using such properties of the algorithms for post-processing and privacy amplification because there are no error messages 
in deterministic two-way protocols in the message mode. So we should come forward with the new kind of protocols that would consider all the data equally and make sure that after sufficiently long application, there can be no useful information left to Eve. Of course, the problem here is that the more we elaborate such data, the less bits we have. In the end, we, are, we can be <coughs> only sure that Eve doesn't have anything when we are practically left with no bits. But anyhow, if we come forward with such new algorithms, perhaps we can combine literally plain text sendings with some kind of quantum control, enjoying the advantage of sending not one, but many photons through the message mode, and in that way speeding up the transmission. That would be all, folks.